Hello everybody, it's the film Pessimist, talking about Oz the Great and the Powerful. The Great and Powerful? Is that what it's called? <laughs> Oz the Great and Powerful. Um, the Origin of the Wizard. This is a prequel to The Wizard of Oz. The Origin of the Wizard, hell yeah. And Mila Kunis, aww. Uh, it's a cute little monkey. Oh, and his name is Finley. How adorable. And there's a little China doll and some other friends. James Franco and Zach Braff were fantastic. Mila Kunis was pretty beautiful. And as for the film itself, it was all right. Uh, nothing too special, but still worth the time. I really enjoyed how it tied everything together. For Oz fans, which should be everyone by now, it's definitely a must-see. Duh. Um, and my brother was like, finally, somebody that doesn't say it sucks. It was dope, though. And my mom said, so good. And I cried. The set was really cool and, and, and technicolor. Beautiful. Um, I disagree now. <laughs> I mean, even at the time, I had to be in denial, bro. I had to be in it. And I didn't even really talk about the film. Um, I really couldn't talk about too much without spoiling it. Um, yeah, it's set 20 years before the events of the original 1900 novel. 20 years before The, the Wizard of Oz. The film, is just, the film is a spiritual prequel to the 1939 MGM film The Wizard of Oz. Um, yeah, James, did I say anything about James Franco? I said they were fantastic. James Franco, um, is Oscar Zoraster, Fadrig, Isaac, Norman, Hinkle, Emmanuel, Ambro Ambroise, how do you say that shit? Diggs. This is a real, this is a real name of Oz. Um, Oscar Zoraster, O-Z, Oz. Commonly known as Oz, a philandering con artist, a stage magician, and a barnstormer. He was part of a traveling circus in the Midwest. He is whisked in a hot air balloon by tornadoes to the land of Oz, where he is believed to be a wizard destined to bring peace to the land, forcing him to overcome his dubious ethics to convince his peers he is the hero needed by the people of Oz. He eventually becomes what is known as the Wizard of Oz. Um, yeah, it's the land is already called Oz. They didn't name the land after the Wizard of Oz. Um... It's just he's just Oz, Oscar Diggs. Uh, the circus strongman learns Oscar, Oscar has flirted with his wife and threatens him. Oscar escapes in a hot air balloon, but is sucked into a tornado. Uh, there he encounters the naive witch Theodora. Theodora is played by Mila Kunis. Um, Theodora, who believes him to be the wizard, prophes prophesied to become king of Oz by defeating the wicked witch who killed the previous king. Oscar accepts the role, wanting to be a wealthy monarch. Uh, en route to the Emerald City, Theodora falls in love with Oscar, though he does not reciprocate her feelings. They encounter the flying monkey, Finley, who pledges his life to Oscar when he saves him from a lion. Um, and the lion is the cowardly lion that we see in the, the movie. Uh, in The Wizard of Oz, I believe. Oscar reveals his deception to Finley and forces him to maintain the idea that he's a wizard. Um, Finley is voiced by Zach Braff. Um... Uh, a winged monkey who pledges his irrevocable life debt to Oscar, believing him to be the prophecy wizard, for saving him from the cowardly lion. Um, he quickly regrets his decision when Oscar reveals he is not a wizard, but nonetheless becomes his loyal ally. Braff also plays Frank, um, Oscar's long-suffering yet loyal assistant in Kansas. Um, so it's kind of reflecting, and it's black and white too, so it's kind of reflecting um, the Wizard of Oz with you know Dorothy Gale in Kansas. And all these actors and actresses playing dual roles. Um, the only constant is Dorothy throughout. Giving it like a dreamlike quality, what's real, what's fiction. Um, in this one, it's very much, this is what's going on. Um, Mila Kunis does not have a dual person, and neither does uh, Rachel Weiss, who's playing uh, Evanora. Um, uh, Michelle Williams uh, plays uh, Glinda. Williams also plays Annie in Old Flame of Oscars and the future mother of Dorothy Gale. Um, that's crazy. Um, Bill Cobbs plays the master tinker. Uh, Joey King, the voice of the of China Girl. A young, living China doll from Chinatown where everything, including its habitants, is made of China. Her home is destroyed by Evanora, leaving her its only survival when, survival survivor when she's found by oscar with whom she forms a strong friendship after he uses glue to fix her legs king also plays a young disabled girl volunteering in oscar's magic show in kansas uh tony cox as nuck slash sourpuss 
the quick-tempered herald and fanfare player of Emerald City who is alive with Linda. Um, Stephen H. R. Uh, Stephen R. Hart, Bruce Campbell, and William Bach play winky, uh, winky guards of the Emerald City. Um, of course, because this is a uh, in this a uh, uh, Ramy that does this. Danny Elfman, yeah, Sam Ramy. Um, Abigail Spencer plays May, Oscar's temporary magic assistant. Kansas is one of his several fleeting loves in the film. Tim Holmes uh, plays Vlad, the strong man who threatens Oscar for trying to court his wife, played by Tony Wynn, prompting Oscar to take the thing. Ramy, who often casts friends and actor and actor regulars in cameo roles. Cast his brother Ted as a small town skeptic at Oscar's magic show who yells, I see a wire, two of his former teachers, Jim Mole and Jim B uh, Bird, as well as Dan Hicks, Mia Serafino and his daughter Emma as Emerald City townspeople. Yeah, none of these. They're cool. Munchkin Rebel. And John Paxson, who previously worked with Sam Raimi, makes a posthumous appearance as an elder tinker in his last film role before he died on November 7th. While the great grandson of Burt Lard also portrays a tinker. That's pretty cool. Um, at the Emerald City, I'm going to have to spoil this whole movie real quick. Um, at the Emerald City, Theodore's older sister, Evanora, tells Oscar that the Wicked Witch resides in the Dark Forest and can be killed if her wand is destroyed. En route to the forest, Oscar and Finley are joined by an orphan living China doll whose village and family were destroyed. Upon arrival, they discover the Wicked Witch is the late king's daughter, uh, Glinda the Good Witch, and Evanora is the true Wicked Witch. The Wicked Witch is not the Wicked Witch. Glinda the Good Witch is not bad. Evanora is the true Wicked Witch. Observing through her crystal ball, Evanora tricks Theodora into thinking Oscar trying to court all three witches, offering her a magic apple to remove her heartache by giving her the power to kill him, which turns her into a hideous green screen, green skin creature instead. So... Uh, yeah, Theodora, it's revealed Evanora is the real Wicked Witch. This is not the Wicked Witch of the West. This is the Wicked Witch of the East. Theodora, Mila Kunis, um, in one scene, she's crying, and her tear comes down, and it burns, and it reveals green skin underneath. Um, and it, I thought it was believed that this was, like, something that she had always dealt with. I didn't think it turned her into the Wicked Witch of the West immediately but then you, it's kind of like a oh, she she's the wicked witch um glinda brings Oscar's group to her domain to escape evanora's army of winkies and flying baboons uh she can buy she confides in oscar that she knows um he is not the wizard but still believes he can help stop evanora he reluctantly takes charge of an army of quadlings tinkers and munchkins um theodora arrives and angrily reveals her new hideous appearance to oscar before threatening to kill him and his allies with the Emerald City's well-prepared army. Oscar despairs at his chances of victory, but after telling China Girl about his hero, Thomas Edison, um, he can he can see you. He conceives a plan that relies on trickery. Glinda and her subjects mount a fake attack on the Emerald City using a pulley rig army of mechanical scarecrow puppets hidden by thick fog. The scarecrow? Whoa! The witches are tricked into sending their flying baboons through a poppy field that puts most of them to sleep. But a pair of conscious baboons take Glinda hostage in the process, causing her to drop her wand, which China Girl retrieves. Meanwhile, Oscar infiltrates the Emerald City with, with his allies, but seemingly abandons them in a hot air balloon loaded with gold, uh, which Theodora destroys with a fireball. As the Wicked Witch prepares to kill Glinda in the uh, center of the city, Oscar, having faked his betrayal and death, appears using a hidden smoke machine and image projector to present a giant image of his face as his true form and intimidates them via a fireworks display. Um, which is really cool. I will say that. It, it's really cool. We'll get into it here in a second. Evanora fearfully hides in her castle while Theodora flees in her uh, broom, unable to hurt the invincible wizard. Oscar offers uh, to Theodora the opportunity to return if she overcomes her wickedness, but Theodora vehemently, vehemently declines and flies away. She's like, never! Um, and flies away to the west, laughing maniacally, leaving Oscar satin. After China Girl frees her from her restraints with her wand, Glinda engages Evanora in a magical duel in the throne room. Glinda destroys Evanora's emerald necklace, revealing her true hag-like appearance, and banishes her from the Emerald City, while a pair of flying baboons catch Evanora and carry her away into the east. Oscar, now ruler of Oz, uses his projector to sustain the illusion of being a powerful wizard. Master Tinker, who helped build his machines, uh, receives Oscar's jackknife, while Nuck, the grumpy munchkin herald whom... Oscar, previously referred to as Sourpuss in jest, 
receives a novelty mask with a smile painted on it. The long-suffering Finley receives Oscar's friendship in his top hat. And China Girl accepts her friends as her new family. Finally, Oscar takes Glenda behind the curtain of the projector, uh, thanks her for making him a better person, and they kiss. So is Oscar and Glenda, like, is they fucking? Are they fucking? Um, maybe. Who knows, you know? Um, I ship it. I'm cool with it. The, the asshole that doesn't deserve anyone. Get the girl. Sure, why not? Um, continuity. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool continuity with this one. A lot, a lot of, uh, I like, I like when they do, like, a prequel. Um, and they're like, let's make some, like, references. Cowardly Lion showed up is really cool. Um, Oz's, uh, story in general is really cool. The acting left a lot to be desired. There's a lot of, like, corny stuff here. You know, it's not pessimist. It's not a pessimistic, uh, review. It could be a better film, but, uh, I don't know. I had fun with it overall. So, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and say that this isn't the worst thing ever. I do want to rewatch it to see if I like it a lot better now. What I did like, I'm watching the movie, and I was like, this is so boring and corny, and um, I, I specifically remember my dad and my sister being there. Now, we all grew up with The Wizard of Oz. My dad famously is, um, my dad famously, um, famously to me, uh, is somebody that doesn't play favorites. I'm very much like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? What's your favorite food? And he's like, um, I don't play favorites. I don't do that. Okay, Dad. Um, I can name like 10 movies right now uh, that are probably his favorites. Uh, Wizard of Oz comes to mind. Uh, the first Ghostbusters. Um, Full Metal Jacket. The Warriors. We all love the Warriors in our house, um, in this family. Um, uh, I don't think Willy Wonka would count. No, I'd put William Wonka up there, probably. I know Dad loves that movie. Um, That's five right there. I got five. I don't know if I can... Now I'm drawing a fucking blank. But for someone who doesn't have favorites, I don't play favorites. I don't do that. Um, He fucking loved this movie. He loved Oz the Great and the Powerful, and my sister did as well. Um, we all grew up with Wizard of Oz. Um, it's a technical marvel. It's, it's such a great film. Um... I'll probably be talking about it next. Uh, the, the Oz the Great and the Powerful is such a is such a great such a great film. Um, Oz the Great and the Powerful. Am I getting? I'm getting off track. What I really loved, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> fuck. I'm having a I'm having a stroke right now. Um, what I loved about it about this about watching this film is my dad and my sister both leaning over like during the movie and being like oh my god this happened oh my god that happened oh my god. The, and then they're they were like fan theorizing in real time when the wizard dies he fakes his death he shows back up it's his james franco's head in the clouds and like the, the, the smoke and everything they're like just like in the original movie and they're like oh my god that's why um the wizard in the in the wizard of oz the actor playing the wizard shows up in many different roles. He's the guard. He's the ho he's he's uh, uh, in the was it carriage? What's the fucking word? The horse of many different colors. Um, he's you know the whatever the fucking word I'm looking for. He's that guy. Uh, he he shows up and he's the he's the the wizard in Kansas as well. And he doesn't show back up when she goes back to Kansas. He's not like, hi there. He's like, he's, um, I don't think he does anyway. Um, but they're like, that's why he's in disguise. Because they can't know that he's not actually dead. I was like, damn. Like, I didn't even think about that. That's pretty, that's pretty sweet. This movie didn't really make me emotional. And in the, in the weakest part, honestly, for me with this film, James Franco, it leaves a lot to be desired. But Mila Kunis... I say she's beautiful in this review. That's, you can't dispute that. She is not good in this movie. Um, you're playing a very dramatic role. Um, she starts out really well, but when she has to show anger and wickedness, it's very cringe. It's very, 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 very cringy. 
So, in conclusion, those are my thoughts on Oz the Great and Powerful. I always think it's called Oz the Great and the Powerful. Oz the Great and Powerful. Um, you guys, you guys have a good one, and uh, and take care. <laughs>